say her name, say their names, Brianna Taylor. Happy Thursday, welcome to the Stina Show. One of my favorite people's on tonight, SAG-AFTRA EVP and New York President, Rebecca Damon. What a title, what titles, right? Like even those titles alone, and she has so many uh, powerful titles we're gonna talk about. Um, she's worked very hard to get them, of course, but uh, I love Rebecca. She's the best, so she'll be on in a minute. I hope everyone had a great week. Hello. Hello, Pisces Khan. Thank you for joining. Um, uh, things have gotten a little hot out there. Be safe. Take care of yourself. You know, stay hydrated, drink the tea. You know, do, I think we should be doing what we would do if we had a regular cold, just so we don't psych ourselves out, um, especially when we're doing what we have to do. Rebecca, yes. Hello. Let's see. Come on over. Hello. Hello, it's me. I'm just in. Hi, Lewis. Just waiting for Rebecca to connect. <laughs> Come on. Come on, Instagram. I see you. Christina, are it you says there? connecting. Okay. So let's on my end, your circle's going around way. and around. So I'll just sit here and wait. All right, Rebecca, we're trying another way. Instagram, Instagram. <laughs> Keeps changing. Why are you unable to join? Why? Why? Let's try this again. Instagram playing games lately with the updates. Who knows? Oh, shoot. I'm yes. back. <laughs> Welcome. Yes. Hi. Thank you for joining, Rebecca. Oh, hello there, lady. <laughs> How are you? Good. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. For a minute there, I was getting that spinning. It wasn't the beach ball because it wasn't colored, just the white spin of, oh, no. Oh, no. Spin a bit. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. But you made it. You swam. I made through. it. I made it. How are you, lady? Good? Good. Uh, Surviving. Thank you, you too, darling. Um, uh, been busy, right? It's been really busy. Crazy busy. But good busy, mostly. But weird busy because of the time that we're in, you know? So it is it's that weird. kind of thing where I miss seeing everybody in person and uh, being able to be with everybody. I mean, that's, I think that's the, that's the hard part, but it's nice to see you on the screen. I'll, I'll, yes. take, I'll take a second prize. <laughs> Thank you too. Yeah. You're such a people person too. It's like, what do you do without that connection? Right? Yeah. You have to, you have to find other ways to, to make it, you know? So, yeah. so this, this, this will do until we can all be together. <laughs> I, yeah. uh, Aye, aye, Madame President. Ah, there you go. <laughs> there you I go. Love, I love it. I but you, when, when did we meet here? 2012, we maybe? Well, I was thinking about this, you know, because I wasn't sure. Like, I was thinking, I remember being at a convention together, but then when I really thought about it, I think we might have met before that. Uh, I think Ellen Crawford introduced us originally, which is, you know, uh, the fabulous Ellen Crawford. Uh, and oh, I fabulous. feel like maybe Mike, her husband, and maybe Dory, the labor dog, were also involved. I'm not sure, but, <laughs> but perhaps, you know, <laughs> the uh, best. Yeah, but no, I remember, I remember convention, but I, I think we met at some other point. I have this pre-memory of you that had something <laughs> to do with Ellen and all that good stuff. Yeah. I think I my memory of you is just like I was in awe of your knowledge at the convention. I was like, who is this lady? It's just like spitting all this oh. knowledge at the mic you know 
Oh, it was very inspiring. There's the, the year a around. tiny bit at a time, right? Not not everything all at once, just a tiny bit uh, at a time. Oh my gosh, I see Eugene. Hey, Eugene. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I got a bunch of people. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Yeah, I'm not yes, I got to and talking, as is known to everybody <laughs> who's ever been in a meeting with me. So there you go. Hey, Jack. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I think it was that it was convention. Yeah, which uh, those are such big events with so many people. I, I'm glad we got to connect really, really, really fun. You know, yeah, uh -huh. it was a good. So that's like eight years ago at this point. Oh, my God. Uh, 2013 would have been convention. I think 20, I've done oh, okay. 20 before that. Yeah, me too. I, I think so. I did too. <laughs> I'll fact check it with Ellen later. Yeah, she'll know. Actually, we should. <laughs> yeah. Too. Yeah, that's true. She is. She's very organized. She's so organized. Yeah. So I think that's when we met. And I think, I mean, it's, you know, I remember, yeah, I think we met in the Cagney, though. See, so we met at the convention and in the Cagney, both things. We can both be right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we kept meeting after that. So who knows? That's right. That's right. <laughs> And, and we now still here like we are doing all this amazing, great stuff. And uh, I'm oh. just so proud of you. It's exciting. Thank you. It takes one to know one. Well, compliments aside, because we could, I could go, we could go on all. <laughs> yeah, everybody can um, tune out immediately. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you all are wonderful. We love you. Thank you for watching. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I like to start from the beginning, like go back to go back. your young memories when you were a little baby Rebecca did you know that she wanted to be a performer and activist uh I did not know I wanted to be an activist uh I think that just sort of came later and sort of naturally because I always had a I was always very opinionated I know that's shocking to anybody that knows me but uh, I did know that I wanted to be a performer at a pretty young age and uh, or I knew that I loved it. I, I remember when I was a kid, and this is going to sound so goofy, so I'm going to just lay it all on to you, but I'm, I'm actually pretty proud of it. Uh, I was a huge, crazy Muppet fan when I was a kid. And so, and so was my brother. And I was just entranced, you know, just like they were, they were it. And I remember uh, we would get for like Christmas and birthdays, all these different Muppet characters. Um, and it was so much fun to have like, you know, you know, everybody, Kermit, Miss Piggy, all that stuff, Animal, who was just my very favorite when I was that age. And uh, my brother got a Muppet drum set, even though he was far too young to be playing with that drum set. So it was, you know, as far as I was concerned, until he got older, it was mine. And uh, <laughs> we had a, I, I grew up in Nebraska and we had this uh, backyard uh, you know, not a New Yorker thing to have so much. Uh, we had this big backyard and, you know, a lot of kids had like lemonade stands and would do all that kind of stuff. Uh, but I, uh, decided I wanted to put on a, uh, the Muppet show in my backyard. Oh. Uh, and, um, we had these refrigerator boxes. We had gotten a refrigerator and somebody else and we, uh, me and some of my friends, we turned them on their side. So one was on top of the other. Wow. And painted them and cut them out and had the stage where all the Muppets could come up into. And uh, I did my own little backyard Muppet show while blaring the music and selling popcorn. And I got wow. the whole neighborhood in the act of my own miniature uh, Muppet show. So, wow. How old were so you? Oh, I was, I was young. I was really uh, young. I wasn't uh, allowed to cut the boxes myself. My dad oh had to do that God. part for me. So How I was cute. very young. And that was really fun. And uh, after that, I just started getting involved in theater because it was like so fun to see it go from beginning to end. Uh, I've always loved how things work behind the scenes, do you know? Um, you are a so. producer, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Yes. I know that my producer had, although these days you have to be everything, right? You have to be a hyphenate. You have to you have to know how to do everything. But uh, back then I just loved doing it and uh, got involved with the children's theater in Nebraska. That was fantastic. Great teachers, great directors. And yeah, you know, so I, I knew, I knew early on like that love of art, you know, that thing that draws us all to it. And uh, it's one of the reasons that as an adult, I am so uh, inspired by seeing like a lot of our young performers who get involved and find their first moment of creativity, whatever that is, you know, whatever that is. So, mm -hmm. yeah, 
but That's activist good. much later. That was just because I was too opinionated, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but for justice purposes. For justice purposes. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Definitely for justice purposes, you know. You, uh, I think in times you find out like, um, you know, you see something that you don't like. And I think a lot of people come to activism that way. You see things that don't work for you and you don't like. And you can either be the person that, you know, uh, sits around and complains about those things or yeah. you can figure out how to change them. And so I think I grew up always sort of thinking, you know, uh, I didn't come from a family of complainers. I came from a family of doers. And so I think that just sort of, uh, transitioned later on in life to, you know, seeing things I didn't like. And in this case, I didn't like saying after fighting. And so I thought I would do something <laughs> about it. So there you go. Nice. Did yeah. your parents, were your parents performers at all? Or? Oh, no, not at all. Although my dad, <laughs> my dad was actually, uh, when he was younger, a, an amazing, an amazing like drafts person, drawer, all that kind of stuff. But both my parents even though there weren't anything formally creative in, in life were, you know, they both are, they're both really fun, interesting people, you know, and that really helps, you know, I think I get my uh, resilience from how they are and also the, what you have to have. And then I also think just, uh, they're both fun and funny. So, yeah. Good combination. Lucky. Yeah. And lucky, right. Yeah, very uh, lucky. Yeah. Uh, I, could do, uh, I could do um I could do um Kermit. Oh Kermit. Oh really? Oh, <laughs> oh my Miss gosh. Piggy? I'm well, trying. There you go. <laughs> Can well, you do any? We're working on the rainbow connection <laughs> offline. You're taking like some singing lessons right now. So you're taking yes, singing yes. lessons. Whoa, but whoa, I'm whoa, trying whoa. to connect to your Muppet love. <laughs> I, I'm all for that. I'm all for that. Yeah. It wasn't until uh much later uh in life that I was in an event and I actually met a lot of the people who did uh, the Muppet characters, and I do not tend to pay a lot of attention to fame uh, in any way, but I will tell you, if, of all the times, I had a moment <laughs> of like, oh my god, yeah, so, yeah, goofy, but nice. pretty clear. you asked, I like I that, to know. it's cute, I like that, yeah, <laughs> well, congrats on meeting some of your uh, inspirations, speaking yeah. of, that was one of my next questions, is uh, a current and past inspiration, so, um, well, definitely my parents, and we talked a little bit about that. Um, I am, in, you know, it's interesting. I was thinking about some of the stuff uh, we were talking about the other day, and I think uh, two of my real inspirations in terms of doing this stuff, and uh, I'm getting all these text messages going, oh, my God, say hi to Christina. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> they need to write you on the thing. We um, love anyway, you. Yeah, they know. They know we're here. Um, uh <laughs> I would say two of my biggest inspirations in terms of all of this would have to be Ken Howard and Mike Hodge. Uh, uh. Both of them, uh, two of the greatest people, like I, I don't know how you get so lucky to meet people like that, but to meet them and call them your friends and, and truly uh, get to be around people that so were willing to give up just huge, huge portions of their lives to help other people because it meant so much to them. I mean, I, I think about all of them, all, you know, uh, I think about Ken and his ability to be so singularly focused and get something done. And I think uh, he would often say he never could have done it without Mike. Um, and both of those men uh, meant the world to me, you know, um, and still do, you know. Yeah, they were very powerful. Uh, yeah, I'm, yeah. But Mike I, I'm taught me now, this. Now, you know, we had those wonderful, <laughs> that's right, the wonderful, powerful men. And, you know, I, I, take, I take inspiration from all kinds of people, but I always kind of think of that, um, you know. And my husband, who puts up with all the <laughs> so, yes, yeah. Yeah. I, I am, I'm, 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 I'm blessed. I really am. Surrounded by good people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so okay. when did you join the union? 
a bazillion years ago. So I'm, I'm going to pretend like I'm not old, uh, because when you I said <laughs> that to me a few years ago, and I still don't think you're you whatever go. age right. you might That's be. Right. So. I'm, I'm, I'm in my mind forever, forever young, which is totally not true. So there you go. Well, you look it. So don't and tell anybody. I am GB over here. <laughs> well, I, and, and the funny thing about it is, you know, it's, it's, uh, in some ways, uh, you kind of grow up uh, in your life with this around you, and it's uh, yeah. I'm 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 I I when I was uh, starting out, I remember being at a meeting and uh, saying to the then president of the union, Eileen Henry, uh, in New York, you you don't have a good orientation and they had had one years before but in New York they didn't have a a great thing and uh, she said great guess what you're gonna need to help me with that I mean like right on the spot uh because she was just a great leader that way she would get people totally involved and engaged and you know uh so it kind of ties back to the last question lest I give all of my fabulous <laughs> male role models I had some great uh great uh women also so there you go that's your answer <laughs> Many moons ago, yes. when you were put into a leadership, you were thwarted into a leadership position. I blame her totally, <laughs> her and Mike, for sure. You got the bug. I did. I did. That's... And, you know, it's, uh, oh, you have the mug. <laughs> you actually have the mug. Oh, darn. I should have, uh, mine's probably sitting in my sink. I haven't done my dishes today. So that's bad. Yeah. <laughs> well, you honesty. That's there, well, you know, <laughs> hey, we had, we had a board meeting today. I had a bunch of other oh. things, so, you know. Well, good news uh, came on the, I just got that email. Very the good, news, good so. news. Yeah, I know. I'm excited for those people that have not yeah. SAG after members watching who haven't read their email. SAG after an equity uh, came to an agreement. Uh, for work during the pandemic period that also secures the jurisdiction after and I'm really happy and excited about it. Yeah, so it's 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 mm -hmm. good for all of us. Very good. Yes. And it was it was unanimously uh, approved by both boards, which I think is just terrific, you know? Yeah, no, so, it took, it, it well, didn't take too long, thankfully, but it, it obviously oh, it, was. It took, it took a little Oh, it while. did? It oh, okay. You would know yeah, more. I'm not we, behind you know the scenes, but. We got where we needed to go, and that's the important thing. And I'm. I'm Congratulations. Okay. All the leaders of both unions should be really proud of the, the work that everybody did together. So, yeah. Yes, hi, thank you. Hi, yeah. Nick says hi, and Robin, and Eugene. Oh, my God. Eugene said he has the mug, too. <laughs> you have the mug. There you go. I know those mugs. Those are good mugs. There you go. Yeah. So, yeah, you, it's, you, it's, uh... you so So, congrats. I know there's lots of good news that under your belt, so I'm, I'm probably going to keep plugging the good stuff, but um, New York. <laughs> oh, by all means. Plug the New York stuff. president. No, no. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That and this is your second term? It uh it 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 is. It yeah. feels like long because you do so much. It feels <laughs> it does feel like a little longer, uh <laughs> for sure. Uh but it's also I mean, you know, look. It's uh, just a title because you put in that much work before, right? So Well, you know, all of these things are always teams, you know? And That's, true. That's I, true. I think for me, I had just been on such a great team for so many years. To be the leader of the New York team is a very different thing, but I certainly don't do it alone. I have a bunch of people, a bunch of members, and we have great staff that really do all those those things together. So it's it's a it's a it's a village. And so what no it doesn't matter who's doing what in the village, but yeah, it's, uh, it's really New it's York. Really SAG uh, after Mike president. Has the Philly mug, our neighbors <laughs> down the way. There you go. Yeah. Hi, Mike, hi. What's up? I, I want a Philly mug. There you go. Uh, but, uh, I'll have to work on that. There you go. Um, but, and then really, executive vice president. Yeah. And that's, that to me is, uh, that is really just a, a, a highlight in terms of, I've always believed in our union as a national union. And it's like, to me, that's one of the most, if I were to uh, put down what are the most important things for people ever to know, it's that it is a national union. And uh, it's uh, being the executive vice president, there's a lot of moving, uh, sometimes, you know, busy, busy parts to everything. But 
you know, when we really want to get things done, we really have to get them all done together. And so, you know, it's, 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 it's great. And working with Gabrielle and Cameron is, yes. uh, they're, yeah, the, now those are some uh, badasses right there. Yeah. You know? um, am I allowed I to say those that? Ladies. I think I am, right? Yeah. I mean, they I, are. I've uh, cursed. I'm a sailor, yes. okay? <laughs> You're a sailor. That's right. This is That's, that kind of a show. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 uh, I love the shot of you in uniform. And I feel like it, it, just, it's, it just carries part of the essence of a part of you that I think uh, always belonged there and is now here. And that's exciting. You know, when, people, you. when people make big steps and do things that they're, they want to do and that they're meant to do, you can always kind of feel it. You know, and that's 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 you in that uniform. Oh, yeah. thank you. Yeah, yeah. I had a psychic once tell me I'm going to be successful in two fields, and I'm like, oh, oh, so whatever that means. The... <laughs> Very vague, right? But right. I, I'm thinking this is what it is. <laughs> this is what balance. It is. Hey, balance. Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah, for sure. So yeah, no. So but nationally, uh, oh, that. Yeah definitely is a lot of responsibility but it's also again it's also really great people do you know and that's really the joy of it is the good people that you get to do things with and you get to think things through and you use a different part of your brain than your creative brain even though you still have to use that but you know it's it's a uh, it's a uh, it's it's fun stuff even even when it's tough it's still fun stuff well, you belong in that role, and uh, I know, and you, you and Gabby are a great team. I, and, uh, yeah, I love you guys. But um, can you, you really, I told you the the moment I heard you speak, I was like, <laughs> like you have so much. You're, you have. I wonder what well, you I just have like photos about. of the contracts in your brain. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I think there's like some innate. Uh, uh, steadier in the back of my brain that just sort of collects all that and then sometimes it just pops out randomly um, you know or not so randomly yeah yeah well you know what are you gonna do well, you know you 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 sometimes were meant I wish you... I could forget things you know that oh, would actually be good you know because sometimes that's I feel like, oh me. my god maybe so I can give you some details. of that let me just take the details <laughs> down a little bit yeah maybe not everybody oh. cares about every detail that's uh uh, up in my brain, uh, hanging out there. Uh, yeah, we need so. you, Rebecca. Don't don't uh, devalue that beautiful brain. So oh, I, uh... I'm I am proud of it, but I also, you know, there I there's you have yeah. to balance everything, and that's also been uh, part of the interesting thing, you know, for me. We uh, uh, when you and I were having the chat uh, beforehand about doing this, one of the things. Uh, that you mentioned that it was funny really made me think about a lot of things over the last uh, little period was just uh, about merging the unions. And it's funny because when, when I did get involved, I really, so much of my thinking about stuff was that I hated that we had two unions. I just hated it. It didn't make sense to me. <laughs> it felt like, I mean, well, you know, it just didn't like make any, it was not common sense, right? Like if you yeah. were going to build something today, you would not have built a, a Screen Actors Guild and an American Federation of Television Radio Artists and had them be these two separate things. You wouldn't have done that. Like, that doesn't make any sense. Um, and, you know, we got to such a bad point between the two unions um, that I, rather than just complain about it, got into the mix and, you know, got... Uh, involved with that and we had a group that put that all together and it, a lot of the people that I still know today that are still active in the union uh, in major ways uh, really uh, helped form the union and that that to me has always been sort of like the uh, I could have stopped right there and in some ways I think I thought that that's probably what would happen like we did this whole you know birthing of this new thing you know um, and really then I remember the facilitator saying to Gabrielle and to me and other people, oh, well, if, if you want the new union to be successful, you actually have to stick around and give it a chance to like have its full birth and have its full thing. And, you know, it, we've been so lucky because there's so many members like you who've come along 
post merger that don't carry any of the old, you don't carry the, the old Screen Actors Guild or the old AFTRA, you just are SAG AFTRA. Mm -hmm. And it's I joined two weeks before the merger. Right, basically. exactly. A few weeks, exactly. yeah. Right, right in time. I know. So I was like, Ooh, oh, one union, I'm on board. <laughs> Great, yeah. No, and that's, yeah. so for me, when I think about that, that is, that is like, to be able to give a generation of people not having to choose between two things and the ability to have the one stronger thing was, you know, uh, really huge. It was really hard though. I don't want to, I don't want to make it just sound like it was easy. It was really hard. It yeah. Was... But if you, if you are in retrospect, if you, which you were looking into the future, which is now, which is only eight years later, everything has merged. So the opportunity has literally presented itself and now, if it was separate, it would be a mess. It would be such a mess because I could do everything now. So why, what's, why would I be into three unions? Because music is its whole, you know, you could be an ASCAP and all this other stuff. So we need to make it simple for performers. It's already difficult to survive. <laughs> it's, it, it is. And I think that's the thing. If you think about, if you think about having all the people that are, uh, you know, uh, in front of a camera and behind a microphone, they should all be in the same house and they should all be able to be together so that you, I mean, like when you think about how do you build like power and strength for members, you would never do it separately. You would always do it together. And what, uh, you know, so what is great about it is it's not just for performers, but because the union, you mentioned music, you know, we've got singers and dancers and recording artists and all of those fabulous, Stunt fabulous people. Oh, I know oh. they're huge. And then, well, I was just doing the recording. Oh, the music. Oh, okay, okay. Obviously you've got stunt <laughs> yes. performers. Right. And we never forget our stunt performers. <laughs> yeah. uh, we've got, We've got all of, of course, broadcasters, you know, both the broadcasters, like when you think of the news, uh, and then you think of all the entertainment broadcasters that are like your DJs and otherwise, which is fantastic. Uh, you know, I think about now, I, one of the things that was a gift for me in the merger was really getting to understand our broadcasters because they were the most foreign uh, to the people from the Screen Actors Guild culture because I'd been a vice president of the Screen Actors Guild uh, here in New York before we merged. And that was something that um, I remember going at the very beginning of the merger process down to Silver Spring, Maryland, uh, to sit with a bunch of the after broadcasters. And, you know, we were all members of both unions except for the broadcasters that were involved in the merger. And I remember sitting at their meeting and thinking to myself, oh my gosh, I have so much to learn so much to learn about what they do. But I also had a huge takeaway, which has really proven to, we have so much in common and uh, that commonality and that love of our union as, you know, uh, the broadcasters are really amazing. And I think of that even more right now where we're in the middle of, you know, this political season in the big wide world and our broadcasters are out there either covering the front lines of all politics and the election, or really, truly, they're out there with the first responders with COVID uh, and all that. Uh, really amazing. But yeah, we have so many great areas of work. You know, whether you're, whether you're, you know, number one on the call sheet, or whether you're doing background performing, all of those things. It is, it's kind of the beauty. We get a lot of strength from every aspect of the work that our members do. It's really cool. And they need protection. So absolutely, there you go. Uh, oh, somebody's having their 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 SAG after anniversary. anniversary. That's cool. Happy That's anniversary, Eugene. Eighteen years. Wow. There you go. Wow. Celebration. Zoom celebration for all. Right. <laughs> I know. I know. We've been spending a lot of time on Zoom. Now, are you on a lot of video stuff uh, these days? Yes. Every day. Every, Every single day. day. Yeah. I love it. I'm thriving at home. Yeah. Yeah. I. <laughs> I love it, but I do miss seeing people. Oh yeah, no, well. I love I love it versus just having voices, you know. Like although I do like the voices, just you know, not in my head, but just you know, <laughs> like a phone call. But it's it is refreshing to see people. You want to know that they're okay, you know. Yeah. Uh, and that's really been a critical uh, piece to this, is I think it gives people a way to see each other and connect, and you know, have a little less isolation during all this, which. 
which has been a big thing in the pandemic, don't you think? Yeah, I, I, before, like SAG has given me so much, like over and over and over again, SAG AFSHA. <laughs> um, just through the foundation alone, I've attended hundreds of events, literally, and and you, that's you meet people and you, sh you know, schmooze, you have some popcorn sometimes, you see great movies, you see stars, you learn, like there's so many good things. Yeah. And I'm like, really, that actually, I'm, I'm maybe withdrawing from that out of everything, because that was my full time job is just showing up to those events for a long time. And now that I don't have that, I get I get upset when I think about it, because I'm used to like going there and volunteering and, you know, handing out the question cards. And it's just such a it's such a great time. And and even just our meetings, like committee meetings, everything. I just miss it so much. <laughs> yeah, it is it is different. It is different in person. I, I do love that the foundation has a lot of online programming during the foundation, yes. Yes, um, which has been like just a wonderful uh, gift to be able to, I hear from members all the time about they took this, you know, the casting access or they yes. did this, this, you know. Free, uh, by the way. Yes. Does it? Yeah. So I, I, I'm really happy that all that's ongoing uh during the pandemic you know um and yeah no it's, it's a, it is so a we got to keep our connection right. to our communities in different ways right so yeah that's wonderful well the education is still there that's what that's without yeah. it yeah yeah um and yeah it's cool it's still very intimate casting sessions which is great and you could wear your bottom pajamas so and you could wear your pajamas there you go <laughs> Yeah, you can wear your pajamas or whatever, 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 whatever floats your boat. There you go. Yeah, screenings I, have screenings have been ramping up through the email too, which is cool. That's absolutely true. Yeah, as we head into award season, a little shift a timeline there with everything going on, but still, still pretty exciting. So that's good. Yeah. The yeah. show must go on, Rebecca. The show. <laughs> of course it does. Of course it does. Here we are. I don't know that we would have been doing this if there wasn't a pandemic. I don't know. I don't think we would. I, I mean, we would, it happens. So we would have just know. gone and have a cup of coffee and nobody would have joined us. There you go. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. That's true. That's true. Um, so I'm going to jump to Labor Power 100. What is that? That sounds awesome. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> Uh, well, uh, the Labor Power 100, uh, I've, I've gotten, uh, it's, I feel silly, uh, uh, but I don't, I don't actually feel silly. The Labor Power 100 is given by city and state. Um, I tend to be bashful about these kind of things. That's something I work on as a person. Uh, it, <laughs> I was twice put on the Labor Power 100 this year and last year for uh, New York State of uh, people that have made an impact. Uh, wow. in New York labor. So yeah, it's a really, it's a really nice list of people. Lots of really hard working uh, labor leaders and politicians that have done a lot for labor and otherwise. So it's, it's a real a, a nice, a very sweet honor to have. Do you know anyone on the list we might know? Uh, yes, I will give you my <laughs> one of my uh, proudest examples uh, on the list of somebody that I just think is Terrific. It's the president of the New York State AFL-CIO, uh, Mario Salento, um, who does so, so much for uh, labor. It's, it's really, he's just an incredible friend to uh, our members, to sag after members. I mean, he's I've seen him. the he's president cool. of, yeah, he came to our uh, BBH strike. The cupcakes, uh, which, right? Yeah, yeah, with the cupcakes. I remember. For sure, <laughs> with the cupcakes. Uh, for those of you who do not know, uh, Christina, uh, tell them about your, uh, uh, we had a really big, we had several events at BBH, uh, but this was yeah. one of my favorites. Uh, and lots of, we had a, a lot of people from the commercials committee really, really helped put that together. But tell me what you did. <laughs> so it was a non-union strike, basically, because BBH is hiring non-union when they have tons of money to hire union workers so I put on a cupcake costume from bottom to top with the little hat and everything uh, <laughs> and we were uh -huh. we were our picture was taken for variety which was cool um and we danced and we were shouting all our chants and uh we protested on the street corner in cupcake costumes. there you go yeah we Mario was little, there <laughs> we threw him a little bake sale Oh yeah, uh, we threw them a little bake sale because they said they had no money. Happily, they yeah. 
they had, you know, attempted to uh, abandon the contract and um, they're back and that's good. Oh, that's so we're was, happy yeah. to have them back for sure. Welcome back. <laughs> but that's where you would know Mario. You would have known uh, uh, Vinny Alvarez from the CLC, the Lieutenant Governor, Kathy Hochul, Kathy, all those yeah. people that stand up for labor uh, and the rights of workers. It was a good group and they really all, all a whole bunch of other unions. The IATSC showed up for us, nice. Actors Equity Friends, all, all manner of, it was really good uh, all around. Tons of other unions. So you work, PGA. do you work directly with Mario? Are you executive council VP with him? So I'm on the board of the New York State AFL-CIO and that is a really good uh, it tends to be a lot of uh, presidents of other labor unions or uh, executive vice presidents or otherwise. And uh, uh, they do a lot of great work. It's, it's all the unions come together to try to uh, lift up the rights of workers. Uh, right now, uh, Mario and his secretary uh, treasurer, uh, really, really good guy, Terry Melvin, uh, they have put together a, a social justice task force for the New York State AFL-CIO. And really, they, they just do important work. Um, so who knows, maybe you'll get to go to one of those conventions one of these days. Oh, uh, uh, shit. Sure. Let's go. Back. We can all get back together. Yeah, but yeah. But it was, it was a real honor to be on a list uh, with people. Oh, that, yeah. Congratulations. Uh, that have just these huge, huge labor careers. Yeah. So that yeah, I think like activism is like in your heart. You don't necessarily discover it or whatever. You just probably always have it. And it just one day pops out, you know, so. Well, it's, it shines through. You just don't see it inside of you probably until so you've been through it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But it's funny because you mentioned the uh, BBH and that was a great, uh, you know, like you never want to go to that, but if you go to that, then you have to make it the best thing possible, but you don't want to just feel like it's a failure of negotiation. But when you get to having to make that choice, that is when everybody needs to stand really strong and be willing to fight and fight uh, in every way possible. And, you know, sag after members really showed up all around the country. Uh, we had st stuff here. Uh, and we had, a, in all the 25 locals, they did different kinds of events to let BBH know that we were watching them. And I, I was in LA, and it's funny, because we talked about Ellen at the top of the call. Uh, yeah. I was actually out for a, 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 out there for an event for BBH, a strike action out there that I led with her and some of the other uh, Los Angeles members, and we had found a, a, a non-union shoot going on. So, yeah, it, good, I mean... Investigation. Good, yeah, good, good <laughs> activism. Yeah, well, we have a great staff and a lot of good members let us know what's going on. And that's how we get it all done. Yeah. So yeah, and somebody said they wish they could have been there at the bake sale. Oh. Yes, the bake sale was was, uh, I don't think they expected creativity around how to do it. But our commercials committee folks uh, really uh, amazing uh, in the planning, uh, along with the staff. So uh, and yes, we did really have cupcakes. So there you go. And billboards on like trucks. I know and stuff. billboards on trucks. They did the not light. like. Right. They did not like when we uh, tried to live uh, at the holidays. We did uh, maybe have a bag of coal that I uh, oh, yeah. to deliver to them. They didn't want it. I don't I remember now. The was guy was like, "You need night. to leave." Yeah. <laughs> we had Scrooge there. I don't know yeah. who we were pretending Scrooge was like. Maybe I don't know, but yeah. But they've come back to the contract, so we'll we're we're happy no. It's all that. it's all good. That's but right. that was that all was that was a well. good it was a good event to bring us all together. It was cool. Yeah, members members when they put their minds to stuff, they can do they can do anything. Let's uh, talk a few more awards. The George oh, Heller Memorial. <laughs> Gold oh card. no! And the Joseph C. Riley Award. What oh. what constitutes a receiving these awards? Uh, I besides don't. being badass. Oh, that's funny. Okay, so you're 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 too kind. But let's see. So, uh, the George Heller Memorial Award or Gold Card, as they would uh, uh, call it, um, is an honor. This meant a lot to me, I think, more so because of the history of it than any piece of it, because uh, it was an award that had come out of legacy after and after 
all the years of working on the merger, it was an interesting thing to get that award because I had really been schooled in the history of it from a lot of the legacy after a, a longtime board members and how important it was to them. So when I received that award, it, it had sort of a special sweetness to me because of that. And uh, um, it was very kind and also very shocking. Uh, I was like, oh my God, I, uh, people trick you into things because I had been chairing the cart and I uh, wasn't actually <laughs> sure if I was gonna get there. You remember, might remember this. I saw you out on the red carpet uh, right beforehand. And I think I grabbed a picture with you and a few people and I'm like, yes. running inside. Mm -hmm. And it's because I was told somebody else was maybe gonna get the award uh, just to try to get me to come because they were afraid I was going to collapse from having been in all these meetings since the crack of dawn. I was like, oh, they, don't let her go lay down because if she goes lay down, <laughs> she won't come. So they they uh, tricked me into my attendance uh, and I would have probably gotten there just late. I might have missed it. So I'm really glad I didn't miss it. But it was that was very kind. And you mentioned uh, the Joseph C. Riley and the Joseph C. Riley is a, a New York award. And, uh, you know, it's it's a. Uh, it's interesting because I got that award along with uh, a whole bunch of other people. They made an exception because they usually only give it to a few people at a time uh, with a bunch of people that participated in the strike of uh, 2000. And, you know, again, uh, some of the hardest things that we have to do as a union come from really, you know, tough choices that have to be made. And then really, regardless of those choices, really sticking to them and sticking together uh, so that was, that was also pretty cool, you know? Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. That was crazy. Do you ha actually have a gold card? I, in fact, do have, I think it's a gold plated <laughs> card, but yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's the, it's a, it's a little, it's like the size of a credit card. There you go. But it, it, you That's can't cool. use it anywhere, but it, <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. You can use it in a film or something. <laughs> you never know, right? It can a have a, a, a yeah, no, uh, it, yeah, it is gold plated, but yes, no, no solid cool. gold. There you go. Oh, okay. Well, I'd like to think so. <laughs> so all so, the people, yeah. Do mm -hmm. you, how do you stay motivated to keep showing up on Zooms and, and even getting, you know, you probably have to go out in the world shop and come back, which is sometimes scary. How do you stay motivated to keep that energy up? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I think I would have had a different answer before the pandemic, you know, I mean, I think the way I'm just trying to think like, well, see, before the pandemic, I think I took a lot for granted, do you know? Um, I think I've always had the good fortune and the good luck to be with, you know, lots of good people and things that kept me motivated, but the the actual pandemic moment of being like, okay, now we're locked down. And now we've got to really think through how we're going to move through this next period of time. I mean, I think like everybody else, uh, I really have had to reflect on what we, what we do with every moment of our life, you know, like what is, what is that going to be and what matters? And, you know, I, I've lost a lot of friends in this pandemic uh, mm -hmm. to COVID-19. And that made me pause for a minute and really reflect on every moment that we spend in our lives, you know? Um, it's a, uh, because it didn't have to go the way that it's gone. And so when I think about what I'm doing right now in my activism, I think I'm a like, I think I've always been sort of the people will make jokes. Ah, she's got an energizer bunny in there or whatever. And I do think I do have an inner uh, drive that helps me. And I'm lucky for that. But I did in this pandemic have to pause for a minute and actually really reflect on what it was that would get me and to the degree where I could be helpful other people through what is, you know, for a really hard moment in time. And, you know, like trying to figure out how to make sure that I was my kindest version of myself at any point in time that I could be, do you know? Like, you know, I, look, I, I come from Nebraska and everybody there is, is nice, but like, you know, that's kind of like the thing, we're nice people, we're that. 
But with the pandemic, I had to think about what does that look like? Not just being nice and good to people, but what is it that we really want to leave with every transaction that we have with somebody? And I had I had come across something when I was reading something about you don't know what kind of day any person has ever had. You don't know what they're going through. You don't, you don't, you don't know if, you know, that might be the worst day for that person. Something bad might have happened to them, or maybe it was a good day, but you know, to try to always lead every little transaction uh, in a positive way. And I think at the beginning of the pandemic, I thought, huh, this is interesting because I have in a normal life, I mean, I think I just have a lot of interaction with people, but now we're in this Zoom universe and it's phone call after phone call. Sometimes it's, you know, just you and I right now and then a few people watching, or sometimes it's like all kinds of people. And, you know, you're, you're talking to a thousand people uh, or thousands of people in a moment. And think about what is it that you want to leave with? And it changes for the subject every time, but the motivation doesn't change. The, the wanting to make sure that people are as okay as they can be and that they know that they're not alone and that there's, you know, love out there and that we are going to keep trucking through this, through this, this zany time. I mean, this time has so many things about it that are bonkers, but every little moment is going to get us closer to the end of this. And, you know, I'm a big advocate for people trying to do things safely, you know, and trying to remind people to be safe in this pandemic. And I, I talk to people all across the country, regardless of what their uh, political stripe is about, you know, taking care of themselves and, and making sure that we all come through this pandemic, you know. Um, and I think having lost so many people to this disease. Yeah, uh, God bless those people. Yeah, I mean, I, it's, uh, and that was, a lot of them were before we actually understood it, you know, like, now we have enough information to know things we can do to keep ourselves safer and, and all that. But even then, it's not yeah. perfect. You know, you can do everything right, and it can't, it's not necessarily perfect. But I think, I think for me, there's a different, deeper motivation, because I feel like, the decisions we make now as a people, as a country, not just sag after it, but just personally, the decisions we make now can really impact what the world looks like. You know, it's, it's uh, how we choose to make the future. I feel like we're in this moment of potentially so much good change. And I know some days it doesn't feel that way, right? Mm -hmm. Like I, I still live in the world. It's not uh, all, you know, it's not Pollyanna here. It's, it's, I think that we can, <laughs> I think it's, we can actually help shift things if we all really put our time, our energy and focus into doing that. And so I think I take a lot of strength from that. I take definitely a lot of strength from my husband and my family and mm -hmm. my friends, you know, and that's, that all helps it. But at the end of the day, I feel like we have to just keep, we have to keep pushing and we have to keep letting people know that, that we're going to keep doing this and we're going to keep staying safe and we're going to keep telling people to wear masks. And, uh, uh, I, I think mine's over there, but I, uh, you know, at any rate, uh, like yes. seriously to make sure that we are doing the right things by each other to catch masks. Yeah. You do, don't you? <laughs> She's like, I got my mask. Every, oh, every, what does it say? Every show I start off with this mask. Oh, that's right. That's right. As I was coming on and off. Yeah. I, every show. It's just a thing. But, um, well, and that's uh, important, right? That kind of moment, it's making sure that people understand there are things that have to change and they, we aren't going to wait for them to change. We are going to help be the force of changing them all together. So that I I think that people I'm I'm just right bringing it up. I think that people don't realize they have that power within them. I don't think they realize their value of their voice, and that's why it's cool to be a performer because that's all you have is is your voice and your movement, and and just like citizens across the world don't realize the steps they're making today, even if it's right smiling at the. Smiling with your eyes at a person yeah. in a mask helps, you know? Oh, I know. I mean, I think that's, I think that's the interesting thing about it is I, I like trying to remind yourself to use other forms of communication because we're out and I think it can be more isolating, right? So like trying to make sure 
that you don't just think, okay, you're smiling under the mask, your eyes are smiling, but wave at the person or say thank you and all those things. So there you go. And somebody got some sag after a mask. There you go. Ah, Jean, there you go. Yes, Rosie Foss plug. Love Rosie. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I know. I got to get one. I got to talk to her. Totally. But, um, I mean, so I like yeah. that you start the show with the mask. I think that's Thank a you. beautiful thing. And trying to make sure that people remember, you know, if we're not going to make these changes now, what, what are we waiting for? You know, what are we, what are we waiting for? We got to do it. We really have to put our minds to it and really yeah, and it's not personal right it's we're one a united consciousness and that's why we feel heavy days together and that's why when there's negativity on the news i mean we all feel that together so the more of us that are trying to be positive and connected and united but the better that the higher you know frequency that has on the i guess the planet and who knows where else but um yeah we get we get lost in the source of it and we we don't get yeah. divided, people. <laughs> no. I mean, I, I, think, I think the in our hearts, if we look for the things that are good in ourselves and good in other people and give that a little bit of room and a little bit of space, there is actually a lot of power in that, you know? I, I uh, remember, and I, I found this the other day, I was looking for... Um, a book because I do a lot of women's advocacy stuff. I know you know this. You've been you've been at some of these events with me. You know we're we're standing on the steps of this. We're pro. You know uh, oh, yes. there's a sign in our hands. That's um, fun. Uh, I um, came across a book that my godmother gave to me, and it it talked about how women had a role to play. And it was just, I, it was so interesting for me to think about, about how women had a role to play. And it was obviously written, you know, decades and decades ago. And I thought that's interesting because actually we all have a role to play. We have to like make space for each other. And we're at a moment in time where it's time to make the space. And we should have done it a long time ago as a people. But we mm -hmm. didn't. But now is the time, right? So like, there has Happy to be Thanksgiving. Room. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's go do it now. Yeah, well, no politics, but you know that's a controversial holiday as it is. So. No, I think now. Yeah, I didn't even hear exactly what you said because something went off on the thing. But uh, oh, uh, thanks. Uh, I said Thanksgiving because it's so controversial. But um, yeah, it's true. It's time to come together. We we don't have much time left. Okay, so all right, all right. So you're deep gonna, quote okay. or enlightenment experience. I know we already enlightened uh, across the board, but if you have anything else to share on that topic. Oh, okay. So uh, you had we had talked about. Um, I do. So when I was younger, I and I still am. So it's not any difference. Uh, I. Uh, was uh, my my best friend growing up and I had a a old underlined dog-eared copy uh uh and there was a Thoreau quote that was our very uh very favorite and it talked about um I went to the woods because I wished to live deliberately to front only the essential facts of life and see if I could not learn what it had to teach and not when I came to die, discover that I had not lived. And I refound that this summer. Uh, and I think, you know, in the losing of people, uh, I actually take a lot of strength in that we are all trying to live to our best selves and trying to make this moment, you know, it is a hard thing that we're living through. And I don't, I don't, I don't want anybody who listens to this or watch this to think that means that it's, you know, that they have to make it easy and rosy. It's, it's not, but I do really believe so deeply that if we each spend every day trying to help each other, trying to make things just an itty bit better, every little itty bit actually adds up to something really powerful and really important. Important. And, you know, you are always such a, a beacon of love and creativity and happiness that when you asked me to do this, I was just absolutely honored and touched because I just think you are a positive, amazing spirit. And I feel like 
uh, somehow I felt like that quote was not just for me to share with the group, but really for me to share with you because you are uh, a rock star lady. And uh, thank you. You know. Uh -huh. yeah. Thank yeah. you. I love you very much. Um, get all emotional, but um, yeah, no, I, I, the first time I tried to have you on, I was moving to Albany, right? You were, and that's right. That that's day, right. I moved to Albany oh and God. it just, I, and that, and I wouldn't have, you know, it would have been rude to give you that energy of a move, right? I would have just moved to put you on the street. <laughs> so, oh, I know. Here I we are. Had, I would have had the, the moving energy. Yeah. This is like five, five months ago. I think it, oh it's taken God. to get, to get to this point for us, but, um, it's yeah, no, like thank it's you. Right day. It's the right it day. It is. It's perfect. Everything's aligning. <laughs> but you're, you're the best and you're so inspirational. And I, I tr like, especially at SAG, like you're my, you're my family, you know, as far as, as I'm concerned. So, I don't know what re relative you would be, but yeah, you're I my, definitely you my, <laughs> I'm going to say sister because oh, soul okay, sister. There you go. Yes. And, uh, Yes. And it's always you are a pleasure to see you. You're definitely my sister. And yeah, I think of SAG after a, it really is. It really is a family. And uh, yeah. that's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing. <laughs> yeah, we, we SAG after takes people in and brings them together when they have, you know, everything and nothing in the middle. But yeah. um, you're the best, Rebecca. We have, we have five more minutes. So Oh, my God. Okay. Maybe you want to throw in some back to work safety tips for our, oh, back our to work actors. safety tips. Just just for the end, just a few back to work safety yeah. tips. Well, so one of the things I was on a call uh, two days ago uh, about how, so what people do over this next period. So whether you celebrate Thanksgiving or not, or whether this is just a time of you know reflection and downtime for you, uh, people need to stay in their home bubbles because how people are going to go back to work after all that. If people are out, uh, you know, it's that mm. ping pong effect. Uh, we don't want to have people who are uh, uh, in riskier situations because of others. So I think it's just a, you know, a gentle reminder to everybody to really not, you know, even though there's a lot of hope in uh, progress on the COVID-19 front, we're actually at such a numerically not good spot and we need people to be really extra careful and extra safe and wear masks and keep the social distancing up and really make sure that they're doing that now so that on the other side of this we're all here to be on the other side of us. Um, I would ask everybody to go to the sag after a, a YouTube page uh, and we have several webinars that talk about the both the origination and the design of the protocols uh, for going back to work and then an actual rundown of what they are. So, you know, if you're a person, some people are, you know, you read and that's how you learn. Some people need to hear it. Some people need to see it. We've got it in every different way. So you can go on the website, but you can go watch those, those videos. And I think the videos are helpful because you can then sort of like take it in and, you know, you can do it while you're doing something else and you take in the information and think about what that looks like. And, you know, people that have gone back to work because, I'm largely hearing about good collaborative environments from people where yeah. people are being very careful. Uh, they're following the protocols. They're getting tested. They're doing all those things. And it's how we take care of each other, right? It's exactly like a union uh, in that way. But we were lucky because we did it, sag after did it with the DGA and the IATSE and the Teamsters. And what a, uh, that I, I, look, I, you know, I adore Gabrielle, but one thing that she did that was just critical, 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 was she and all the other labor leaders really got together and figured out how to do it together uh, because it, it, it enhanced the protocols in a way, like we all had hired epidemiologists and we had our industrial agents, we had all the experts, but the unions working so collaboratively together I don't think, and I've asked staff that have been around, I'm not kidding you, for decades and decades and decades, and they're, they have said there's never been anything that has been this collaborative and this, like, inspirational to them, and that, that to me is like uh, a That's resilience, it. yeah, yeah, of her and David White to, uh, to do that with all the other labor leaders, because what we ended up with was 
came from every point of view. You know, it wasn't like segments we had to put together. It was we were working with the people who did the hair and makeup while we were working with, you know, our performers right. and our safety commission, while we were working with the director. And so what came out of it took everything into account. And obviously, you know, everybody gets to, uh, you know, make it work for themselves within those parameters. But really kind of an inspirational, cool, really cool thing to see that. That's a good way to end on. on I, I wanted to are, just say that. We are, we the, are, you know. Yeah. This, there's also self-help videos on there. I saw. Yeah. So on that YouTube, there's all those videos, but there's yeah. also self-help. Yeah. So people should definitely go and look at the SAG after YouTube channel because there's content on all kinds of good stuff. So there you go. Where Goodbye should they you follow too. you? Huh? Oh, <laughs> where should uh, they follow? Yes. Uh, Rebecca Damon on, uh, you know, Instagram uh, and Facebook and Rebecca Damon NYC on Twitter. Yes. Thank you, you Rebecca. It's so good to see you. I miss you. you. I miss, I miss you. My air hug. I know. It's like, hi. <laughs> uh, well, I'll, you know, I'll try to bring Gabby on one of these days. And I think you could maybe have more than one person on here. I'm not sure. Yet, can well, we? You'll give us the tutorial. Yes, I will. And thank you it. so much, Rebecca. I, I love you. you. We'll see I you miss soon. You. Okay, sis. Stay safe. Wear that mask. Thank you. Thank you. Too. All right. Thank you, Rebecca. It's been a pleasure. Bye. Okay. Bye. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you, guys. I see you, Fred, Eugene, Mike, Tanya. Thank you, everyone. Mark, everyone who joined. Um, thank you for coming to see Rebecca. She is a well of knowledge. And um, yeah, please, uh, if you want to rewatch this, I'll post it in a few days on the YouTube and all the links um, to see uh, what she said, because it's good to review some of the tips she had. Uh, thank you for joining. Next week, I might not have a guest on because it's Thanksgiving. I might just show up, say hi for a minute and go about our day. Um, but yeah, tune in and thank you for joining. Love and bless.